Palakal. Uh, he is both the president and the founder of the Christian Musicological Society of India. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe the revival he is going to be talking about is of a early music that makes the early music we've been talking about so far seem quite new. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so with that in mind, uh, let's welcome uh, Dr. Joseph Palakal. Let me begin by singing a refrain from a famous Aramaic chant. Bar Mariam, Bar Mariam, Bar Alaha, the eldest Mariam. Bar Mariam, son of Mary, son of Mary, Bar Alaha. Mary brought forth the Son of God. <clears throat> Bar Mariam, Bar Mariam. Barala, the elders, Mariam. Well, we started this session with uh, early music, and we are pushing the timeline of earliness into the early Christian era. And we're also going to open a secret about India that India is also home for early Christianity. And the language that was spoken at the Last Supper in Jerusalem came to India and Christianity became a part of, was propagated in that language initially. And Syriac, which the Aramaic came to be known as in the Christian era, became the liturgical language at least uh, by 4th century and it re remained until 1962. By 5th century, Syriac diversified into East Syriac and West Syriac, representing two different pronunciations, two different liturgies, and two different theologies. What we are going to see here today is the East Syriac tradition from the Syro Malabar Church. We are trying to revive this, the sound and the melody and memories of this tradition. So that's what we are going to see for 20 minutes in the video. There are four parts in the video. The first section so why should we take the Syriac Aramaic tradition in India seriously? Syriac and Aramaic tradition in India has something to contribute. The, the pronunciation of the East Syriac, which scholars believe, some of the scholars believe, was closer to the kind of pronunciation that was prevalent at the time of Jesus. And then the second is East meets West. When the Portuguese missionaries came to India, they were dissatisfied with the Syriac tradition. So they wanted to change it in Latin and make these people quote unquote Roman Catholic. But people resisted changing the language. So what happened was they translated Latin chants into Syriac and composed a new in India. So that section refers to that part of the history. The third is how this tradition is being transferred to the younger generation from the transitional generation. By transitional generation, we mean people who were born before 1962, who were familiar with the Syriac liturgy and then the Malayalam vernacular liturgy. And the fourth is our attempt to introduce the sound and memories to the present generation. So let's have this video for 20 minutes and then we will have time for discussion. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just afraid you mentioned this at the very beginning, but you could could you talk more about the role of the saxophone in um, Syrian Christian liturgy? Because the, the guy who's playing the saxophone in the video, that really struck me. I knew, I knew that the drum, the triangle, the violin have been so important in the liturgy for quite some time with the saxophone. Could you talk more about that? Thank you. Saxophone has no place in liturgy. <laughs> this man, grew up, he, he plays saxophone, and he loves Syriac melodies. Uh -huh. He has this nostalgic feeling towards Syriac melodies. So he played Syriac melodies on the saxophone. So it was fascinating to me. And he played some of the melodies that I didn't know about. So we incorporated that into the film because he's a unique person. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, I've done my research on Syro Malabar and I found that the revival of the Syro-Melite tradition, 
uh, Maronites resorted to keep their music, keep their original melody, which were transmitted orally, and they had to sacrifice the language. So they went into Arabic uh, while keeping the poetic meter and, and uh, the tools. And here we see the opposite thing happening. And uh, so you mentioned most of the them that it's Latin music, Latin melodies. Latin text translated into Syriac. How about the music? Can you the music was composed in Kerala. It, it has a Syriac feeling to it. It is not purely Western. It didn't sound yeah, Western. Like that, yeah. 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 But uh, with that kind of the instruments too. And do, you, do you have anything from pre. Uh, like, was it, was it ever, ever uh, you say, uh, performed an accompaniment? Uh, yes. Because it's originally it's, it's an accompaniment. Yes, yes. And uh, do you, you don't have any singing class? There are. Quite a few, yes. That is the topic of my doctoral dissertation. But the melodies in the office of the hours right. are probably the earliest melodies. They were unaccompanied, obviously, this for the office of the hours. So those melodies can be considered more traditional. Yeah, traditional. And these are still performed? Yes. And at the office? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and in the Mermaid Church, those melodies were also became part of the mass, like the three yes. first part of the mass. And um, yeah, it's interesting. I found also among Assyrians how language is important. So in your case, now uh, in my steps also I found that the revival of the chants by keeping the music and the poetic meter led into interest in the language itself. So now people are more interested in, uh, in Syriac as well. So that was a reverse thing. Fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Don't you use West Syriac? Western Syriac. Isn't it? Yeah. You say Kadisho Aloho? Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm interested in the Syriac language because I think it's very important in the Syriac language. We have melodies from the, that's what she, I was mentioning. The, the melodies that were used in the office of the hours. We have that. Yes. Okay. Yes. But then we added Latin chants. Uh, yes. Recorded. There's a separate section. Okay. Yeah. And is there any, yeah, what, is there any musical elements which don't come directly either from the early, I mean, there is a those melodies are, for example, the melody that I sang, Baramariniyam, similar melodies. And then uh, more melodies, Marinirlis, Madhavamne, this is Malayalam. The text was translated into Malayalam, but sung to the same melody. As you mentioned, mm -hmm. Deva Layami So that tradition also we have retain the melody, translate the text by using the same poetic meter and melody. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? In terms of the more traditional ones, uh how do you describe the music? Does it have any influence? Like, it's, it's definitely not modal, right? Can we, does it have any an Indian influence? Any Indian music influence? Uh, Indian influence, I don't think so. So no raga or anything? No raga, okay. no. Now, is it modal? That word mold is a difficult word to yeah. apply. There are some modal melodies, like metrical models. And they keep on composing. For example, Tu ye bad mus has choga, prisa vasal pariyasa, tarariram niraram, tarariram niraram. This is a particular melody. That melody is used as a mode, a manner, and then you compose other texts for different liturgical contexts. So that system was there from that period. Yeah.
Well, I, I do think that's all the time we have. So uh, thank you to all our presenters, David and Joe and Joseph. And uh, I hope these conversations will continue uh, into the hallways. And uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thanks.